Hello everybody, welcome back to the Southside BPL channel. I'm your ever-present host, Southside, and I have an amazing video here today. I am currently here with um, the first draft of Taito Station Trans's um, Sound Voltex team, XD Levy. Hello, he'll say hello to the camera, Lev. Hello, my name's Levy. I go by Levy Levy Earn on extra Twitter, or Levy on. Mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah. right. Say in Japanese. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is a, this is such a great opportunity. I thank you a lot for being a, for making time here. So and you know, he had he had an amazing BPL campaign, reaching all the way to the grand finals of the tournament. He unfortunately trads couldn't finish the job against uh, Team Cell Cat, but you know. Let we you know uh, in his first BPL he managed to help the team reach to the absolute end and you know congratulations for your congratulations for on your um, achievement. Thank you so much. No problem. So okay, so before this Q and A will begin, uh, I have um, some ground rules that I have set up. So I have grouped some questions together into one because some of them are basically the same. So. So in these mixed questions, um, I have attributed multiple people uh, as asking the questions, and um, and yeah, you will see your name on the question that I have mixed in. The second the second thing is that me and Levy have vetted every single question submitted, and if you don't see your name or anything that you asked, it's because uh, I didn't answer it, or I had it struck out because uh, it didn't meet the submission guidelines at all. And um, since this is about uh, the BPL experience and just like uh, more casual stuff, more um, for more just um, yeah casual stuff for him, there will be minimal to like no discussion about improvement. So there's not going to be much discussions about how to get better and such like that. I think that can be left to personal, more personal discussions and such. So okay, we're probably going to take it from the top with the first question here. Um, okay, so. How does it feel to be an American in BPL? How is it compared to KAC? This was asked by Olive and Jason PK. So yeah, how does it feel? How does it feel to be an American in BPL? I do feel pretty American. <laughs> yeah, that's... How is it compared to KAC? Well, I guess with BPL, since it's consecutive instead of like KCU where you get one shot on one day. Mm-hmm. It's like Yeah, like I benefited more from BPL with learning experience. Like you get to learn more about yourself that you probably didn't know before doing like official tournaments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say I, I like BPL more than KAC. Hmm, so like did you enjoy like grinding for uh EX much more than like, you know, just flat chasing or like PUCs on like very, very difficult songs that possibly like, you know, other people can't do as consistently? Do, do you feel that that's a lot better? At first it gave me something to do. I guess that's true. <laughs> but then the more that I was doing it, you realize, like, sure, everyone can next score. But there's certain things that you can do better than other people. Or if you don't watch out, then someone can definitely... I don't know if snipe's the right word. Yeah. <laughs> So it's not really snipe, I guess, because yeah, there were like some pretty difficult matches that you had. Like, I think that match against Kengo from Game Panic, that was pretty rough. I believe uh, you couldn't take a single match off of him. Yeah, my conditions were not too great. Yeah, the pressure. I imagine. I would imagine there's also a lot of pressure in the venue too. Yeah. Hmm. Well, well, it well it does well. You know, I guess I guess it's also I guess it's like a completely I guess we can gather that it was like, like a completely different ballpark compared to KC. KC is just like a single day, 
BPL's like definitely like consecutive matches over a few days and you know you're fighting right. on like the hardest metric of timing I guess so that's gonna be, a lot of things can go wrong and yeah but like so I guess so I guess the conclusion is just that you know BPL is you you do you do enjoy BP, the BPL environment more but it is a lot more difficult you would you say that yeah you have to study a lot more <laughs> especially lower level yeah, totally understood. That's really because there's so much that people can do in that level. All right, so that's probably mm -hmm. question one. So, okay, question two. This is a very, very popular question. People really, really want to know, like... For, okay, so this is asked by Hopeng, Koreri, Jepetsky, and Anon, and Jason PK again. So this, uh, what do you do to control your nerves? Do you do have to do anything to help you shake off your nerves? <clears throat> What do I do to control my nerves? Well, I think like the first thing to talk about is you, you can't 100% get rid of nerves. That's mm. just something that's going to be there. Oh, yeah. So it's... if you think like you can 100% eradicate it, mm, I mean, it just it depends on the person. Mm. I personally don't believe you can 100% eradicate it. But the things that I do to control my nerves, or does anything help me shake it off? Well, there are some games where I was chewing gum, so was Misobi. Mm. But then, now that I think about it, I don't know if I was just chewing gum just to chew gum, or if it helped me. Mm. But it could help some people. Yeah, I think like it takes off the edge, like because you're like thinking of something else, and you know, mm. sometimes sometimes when I get really really nervy, I just like try to have a big gulp of water and like just breathe a bit, breathe just like more right. try to breathe more but like you know that's how i usually deal with it but like i've never thought about gum that way well recently i've been like experimenting mm -hmm. in, like with nerves because during the dream match uh -huh. it was like the most nervous i've ever gotten <laughs> compared to like kc or epl match is there and, a like, specific I reason why at first well, I guess I kind of knew why. There was a specific reason. So, I think the, like, overall gist I'm getting at is taking care of your health or, like, watching what you consume. Mm -hmm. Because recently, I have just completely stopped drinking energy drinks. So, mm -hmm. I only, if I ever need caffeine... I also like don't do coffee anymore because it spikes mm. up my nerves a lot. So That's recently I've just been drinking like caffeinated green tea, which is like different caffeine, apparently. Mm -hmm. But it helps me a lot. If anything, I just drink a lot more water now than I used to. Ah uh, yes, the elixir of life itself, water. <laughs> yeah. I but think I yeah. go ahead. Also like watching what you eat as well, or mm -hmm. like. This is where this is depends on a person by person basis. Because mm -hmm. recently during the matches I was told to like not eat too much. Just have to eat just enough before you perform in a match. But recently I've been not doing that. I've been eating a lot more. Because I had a tournament last month where I tried to do the same thing with eating just enough, but not too much, mm -hmm. and it didn't help me. Like it felt like my nerves were a lot worse because like you try if you try to eat enough, and you probably like under eight, and then you get hungry. Mm -hmm. Like at least for me, you do get like three or four times mm -hmm. more nervous whenever you're hungry. I guess yeah. That's Especially with caffeine. Thing. Caffeine will mm. like double and make <laughs> it worse. At least from my experience. So mm. I also eat a lot more healthy now. Like mm. just this whole question is just me talking about taking care of your own health is basically what I'm. Yeah, yeah. That's. Like, that's I think that's. I think that was the angle that um, some people were discussing with regards to like better performance. Of course, um, I did remember reading online like. Uh, uh, Exit and Shiron, I believe they stopped drinking beer and like just just stopped drinking beer. 
like throughout the mm. entire BPL. I think that's like how they mentioned. And like the funny story was like uh Shiron was like did Shiron was like taking care of his health, but like the entire two DX Gigo team was like uh Nomi Hodai, Tabe Hodai all day. Ah <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, that was like pretty that was pretty funny to read. But yeah. But yeah, that's like I think but yeah, I think the core message is that, you know, if you take care of your own health you'll definitely perform better and not just in tournaments just in general I think you'll have better sessions overall just if you just take care of your health I think there's one more thing I can add to this but mm-hmm. like yeah go ahead I think it just depends on mm-hmm. like what you're nervous about mm-hmm. because it wasn't until I got out of the regular stage where I just started treating the games with a different mindset mm, that's right actually because basically my whole team was just like at this point your opponent is not who your opponent is like it became more known like so prominent to me mm-hmm. during the round one um round mm-hmm. oh my like god the, I'm only thinking about the Japanese word for it I don't know the, how, the, the, don't you know mean the regular you mean the regular oh stage god. you mean the regular stage yeah the regular stage versus round one mm-hmm. maybe yeah, versus round one at that point, I just didn't even think that my opponent was Reika anymore. Well, like, your opponent is still... My opponent is still Reika. Mm-hmm. But I decided to think about it in a different way. Like, right now, I'm currently not in BPL. I am at my home game center. Just playing a round of Arena. And that's how I thought about it. With a new song at the end. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, like with yeah, it's a round of arena with a new song at the end. Just like, yeah, try not to. I try not to think about it too much. Yeah, which I wish I did more during mm. first few, um, first few rounds. Yeah, definitely of the season. Yeah, definitely like something to think about. Something to think about too. Just. Placing yourself in a completely different place, just like a safe place, I guess. Your mind, your mind is a safe place. All right, so that's question number two about controlling the nerves. We're going to move on to the next question. Okay, so, okay, so I think this is a bit more general. This one's a bit asked by like Swifty, Nifs, Efan, Hikoshi, and then Anon. So, what goes into your song picks for like I guess Mega Mix and like single like when you pick a song for like um, your single match something like that. <clears throat> what goes into my song picks? There like strategy with it? Anything? Oh, with it? oh there is strategy. Mm-hmm. It's just I don't know how much I'm willing to explain. <laughs> uh, just but as much as you could, I guess. Mm. That my advisors have mm-hmm. have a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. Basically, has like every single song. Oh shit! Well, at this point, I'm pretty sure every team does this. Like, if another team doesn't do this, that'll be kind of wild, actually. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'll be insane. wild, actually. Yeah, but, yeah insane. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a spreadsheet. It has like every single song, and we have like two spreadsheets: one for like X Score, another one for Mega Mix. Mm-hmm. And then we just like, well, for everyone, like three players, like me, Murakami, Misobi. Mm-hmm. We just like mark what we're confident in. Uh huh. We mark like I don't want to play this. Uh, okay. <laughs> or you put in the middle like you don't want to pick this, but if it gets picked against you, then okay. Like it's fine, I like guess. Kind of deal, like in the middle. Yeah, like it's kind of fine if this gets picked against me. I'm like okay yeah. with it, but not I would pick. It. I wouldn't pick it, but if it's with me, it's fine. Yeah. But most of the time, it's not just the player picks themselves. We talk about it as a team. Mm-hmm. We also know who our opponent is beforehand. Not like a long time in advance, like a few days before the actual match. Mm-hmm. And then we just consult like what the opponent player might lack in the word to say mm-hmm. but also like what you're confident in as well I see 
So like it just so it's just mostly the spreadsheet and just like personal like <clears throat> like the personal uh, knowledge of the opponent and also just like yeah just like your own expertise I guess like with everything just what you think you can win over them to pick. Mm. I guess it's pretty. I guess I guess if it's if you put it that way, it's pretty simple than how like it just goes over. It's just like more strategizing, which is the right move, pretty much. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so that's probably okay. So that's I guess like the what goes into the song picks seems. It, I thought it would, I thought there was actually a bit more to it, but I guess now that I think about it, a spreadsheet so, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. I don't think about it more. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't have too much to talk about it is because what I mainly did mm -hmm. was like I only did two Mega Mixes throughout the whole season. That's true. Horai, Horai, Hora and I only did Kaneko, one right? tag. Hora oh, I did two tags actually. Yeah, yeah, you did two, I believe, or like uh, all the way to the finals, yeah, right? Yeah, you, yeah, but in Mega... the regular stage, I only did one Mega Mix and I did one tag. That mm -hmm. was it. Yeah, I think Everything it was. was just. You had the round one match, right? One v one. What about the it, round one match? Uh, you did tag in the round one match, right? I believe. No, I did tag in the um, Locat match for regular. All oh, right, all oh, right, right, right. Because yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I played with Murakami. Mm -hmm. Basically, what went to my song pick there. What's funny is, we picked. Mine for Rune remix. Mm -hmm. We aren't actually gonna pick that because I accidentally took the world record for it, so everyone can see it. <laughs> If you like that's scroll past crazy. the song, yeah, that's kind of crazy. So, I was gonna try scaring our opponent by raising it. Like, I was trying to SPC it, but I got max minus one. But I guess that's enough. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, but I guess then, that's enough. We, we were not supposed to like pick that, but then like we were practicing our other potential picks, and it looked like the best one was line for ruin. <laughs> and yeah, Murakami is like pretty we crazy. Line for yeah. ruin. <laughs> Murakami was pretty crazy at Life for Ruin too. Like I thought that when I saw that I was like, oh that's Murakami's pick and then you know I think Levy just like No, that was my pick. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Mur Murakami didn't want to play it actually. But <laughs> I, I understand why he, he decided that. Yeah. Us as a team was like They really wanted us to pick it as a team. So mm. at that point it was just Murakami had to like Screw it, just take it, it, I guess. Yeah, screw it, just fuck yeah. it, fuck it, I guess, let's just go. <laughs> because, like, he was having trouble with it for a certain pattern, mm. and I started to realize the more I played it, I was actually having trouble as well. <laughs> yeah, it just, it's so really, really hard. It, yeah. I S'd it, I, like, S'd it, and I'm just like, wow, my EX is, like, absolute, like, absolutely, like, trash on it. <laughs> it was really scary. Yeah, it was really, really, like, very very difficult pick. Well, yeah, shit. I guess that's probably like the what goes into the song picks. We'll move on to the next question here. Okay, so um, kind of a one, kind of like a combined with the previous question, it kind of ties up. So, how do you formulate strategy with the entire trans team? This was asked by uh, FD and Tekuraze. I think like most of the things I said on the previous slide also applies to this, hmm. but uh, there's like something else that I could add to this. Mm -hmm. Let's think about it. Yeah, real quick. Any... I'm trying to think outside of regular stage. Yeah, like, is there anything special? Like, anything like not really like commonly could commonly be thought of? Not really. Well, the one thing that comes to mind was. In the semifinals, when I was doing the tag battle with Murakami versus mm -hmm. Sokat. Uh huh. Wait, no, this no, was, that was the this finals. semifinals. This is the actual mm -hmm. finals. Yeah, this is the finals. It was like level 18 notes. Mm -hmm. I just tried to. Um, I basically did the opposite of during the regular stage where like Murakami had to suck up. This time I had to suck it up. <laughs> no, it I was no get Murakami. I told Murakami, like, yeah. Like, if you're good at it, then I'll get good at it. But I'm not that good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, though, gives us pretty rough. Uh, I, I, it's I rough. It. Yeah, it's really rough. And then, yeah, ended up, uh, ended up like, Daiki went, like, beast mode on that song, I think. Like, minus two, I believe. Oh, Daiki and Straw went beast mode on it. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, I couldn't even get a single digit. 
yeah, yeah. Those two are so those two are so powerful. It really when, when I was watching the finals of like how are these two how are these two guys real? They're so strong. <laughs> yeah, that team is really hard to take down, especially just mm. those two alone. Those two alone, man. Crazy. Well, yeah, I think it kind of like tied up nicely with the previous question. So this question went by pretty fast. We're going to move on to the next one. Okay, so uh, this one's asked by Marsh. And uh, I added, I, I personally added for the second part of this question because I found it like pretty interesting too myself. So who is your favorite Sound Voltex BPL player to meet outside of the arcade or in like any other players that you're like tight with, like BPL or otherwise? The second part is for me. So yeah, but like the question is just the first one. Favorite Voltex VPO player? I mean, outside of arcade. Well, ideally, I'd want to answer this as one of my own teammates, mm -hmm. Murakami Misumi. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I'd say Kaneko. Oh, Kaneko! You really guys need a lot. on the Earth guy. Mm -hmm. And like, Wani wrote, Wani wrote told me before that me and Kaneko pretty much have same. Personality. So oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Well. So you get along pretty well, just like. Yeah, I never realized. That, actually. <sighs> I think like usually you don't really fi you don't really like feel like you're very similar to someone until like somebody points it out to you, and then you're like, oh, I guess that's mm -hmm. why we're like really really close close like we're really really like tight and have the like same kind of mindset for a lot of things. Any other players? I'm tight with BPO or otherwise. I mean, like outside of. I mean, like I guess the first. I like this is just like not, not uh not only BPL. I guess like anyone anyone you're like really close with. Mm, well, Master which. Oh, the game panic season, advisor. Became the game, the game panic advisor. Mm -hmm. He usually takes. Us, like invites a bunch of friends. We basically mm -hmm. go over on like. A road trip. Oh shit! Like a few months ago, we went to Matsumoto, mm. which is where Yuichi lives. Oh Yuichi right, right, yeah. The Apina, because Apina, because Apina is like around yeah. the Nagano area too, so that's kind of just like yeah. It was fun. That road trip was like Masare, me, Kengo, Misobi. Um, I'm forgetting someone. Kaneko. Mm. What so is happening? Mm. I mean, there's other people involved as well, but mm. that's the only names I can drop. But yeah, we just like weekend day trip Matsumoto. Just stayed at a kind of like a capsule hotel. Oh, <laughs> not like the stereotypical YouTube thumbnail capsule hotel. Mm, it's like a legit, but, like a legit. Super like nice capsule. Yes. Yeah, it was nice. Mm. It's like road trip with your friends. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I did. I think I saw pics of that tr that trip actually. Like just scrolling on Twitter, I'm like, oh, Masaru and Game Panic and like the Game Panic and Trent guys are like just going on going going somewhere together. Yeah. Well, that, now that I think about it, it's, it's crazy because I'm the non only non Japanese person in my group. Yeah, that's yeah actually, pretty simulated in pretty well. <laughs> yeah, we all get along pretty well. Hmm. I think you also mentioned. I think like this is a, this is kind of just from our conversations and like the public servers before, but I believe you said that Penta was a really good guy too. Penta, yeah, he's really mm -hmm. nice. I mean, like, I've pretty much met all the Sambotics BPO players, even like season two. Oh, okay. everyone's so, a nice. Everyone's nice. Hmm. I mean, I get along with everyone that I think. That's I think that's, hmm? the people that I do want to get along with more were the former Supernova Tokyo team. Oh, so like 20 Day, K, and uh, Kick? 20 Day, Kick, and, and Leon. K. Oh, Leon? Oh, Leon too, right? Leon. Mm. Yeah, he was the first pick from yeah. the season. Yeah, he just kind of like yeah. disappeared from over. social media. So, wondering yeah. what He's just living his own life. Oh, that's good, that's good then. That's good then. Recently. That's good. Yeah. Okay, okay. Really interesting. No really, really time. Hmm, hmm, I see. So yeah, that's really, really interesting answer too. So, okay, we can probably move on to the next one. 
Oh shoot. Okay, so uh, sorry. Oh crap. Sorry. Okay, so this is uh the <laughs> crap. Okay, so this is just like the non-group questions. Um, the previous questions were like multiple questions m m put smashed together one. So these are like just single questions asked for people. We're gonna go through these faster as possible, and yeah, just th these are all where the casual questions are. So yeah. Okay, so uh, this one asked by Gadget. How long have you been playing Sound Voltex and like rhythm game in general? Rhythm game. Well, I'm 21 right now. Mm -hmm. I think I started playing any sort of rhythm game by the age of like five or something. <laughs> what was what was, was your like, first game? With the family. I think we were playing Rock Band or something. All right. Yeah, of course. The, the and then eventually you just got the Guitar Hero. And then I got into computer rhythm games that mm -hmm. I will not be mentioning. <laughs> I understand. And then, yeah. How long have I been playing Voltex is Does that align with when I first knew about Sound Voltex? Uh you can because talk you can talk about that too. I think that's if that's cool. Like I first knew about Sound Voltex when the new song that was releasing was like I think it was in the middle of season two of Gravity Wars. What was the song? I don't I don't remember them by heart unfortunately, but the new songs were like Lord Cross Sight. Oh, it was that update, so it's like Lord Cross Sight. Who is that update? The flu like flu yeah. Diablosis, yeah, yeah Diablosis yeah. Naga and like Flugel Arpeggio. Yeah, those were the new songs back then, which is when I knew about the game. But when I first played the game officially, mm -hmm. like twenty seventeen AX. Oh, it was the AX. At 20, was it 2017? I remember playing Heavenly Haven. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. The new songs back then were 2015. Were I don't remember. I also don't remember the exact date. I <laughs> remember the. I remember. Around. I remember the songs. I just don't remember when. And it was like the final update because of Flugel was the basically like the final final song in Sound Voltex Three. It was 2016. Yeah, <laughs> jeez. Crazy. I remember, I yeah. remember playing. I remember playing that update. Christ, I'm old. <laughs> Sorry, I'm spreading misinformation. No worries. Yeah, worries. this update was 2016 in August, and I think the first time I played Sonotix officially was 2017 during Anime Expo in California. Hmm. Because first time I played the game was Heaven Haven. Mm. Like on oh, pad. that's it. Oh, well, that's crazy. You went from heaven starting at Heavenly Haven to like top VF, but yeah, I think I've seen stories like that too. Yeah, my first Heavenly Haven experience was quite funny and really bad. <laughs> Mine like divulging. It's like I already had a lot of experience with the game before I played the game for the first time. Uh huh. Personally. Uh huh. And first thing I picked was, I really remember this. I picked Aragami. <laughs> the maximum. That's not a good 70 to start with. I could not hit the knobs at all. Like, it was just so <laughs> alien to me. But then I, I still cleared it because the whole ending was just buttons and I was... Yeah, that sounds about right, actually. <laughs> yeah. That sounds and like... from there, I just about like... About right, yeah. I started grinding. Like... I didn't yeah. really have round one access. Like, I couldn't mm. just play a third game, so I just yeah. started grinding. Mm. I think I think EAC was I think like Konasute was like really where you started, really really like putting crazy hours in the game. Konasute, yeah. Mm. But I think like to put it to time mm -hmm. perspective, I feel like it's been eight years or something. I've been playing this game. Yeah, actually that like lines up about right, 2016. Yeah, that yeah. yeah, shit, that's some pretty wild lord pretty like wild like starting lore. First seventy first song on the cab is Aragami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, so that's question one here. Let's move on. Uh one's kinda of, kinda of interesting, I guess. What do your family think of you being in BPL? Like I guess you had I guess like your family had to have known what's going on. What's funny is they didn't for the longest time. They knew I was playing this game, but like, they didn't know what I was doing in Japan. <laughs> and so like they didn't really I mean, ask. 
so they didn't realize. And then you just like, oh, uh, I'm getting nah, paid. I didn't really. Ask. I just showed them. I was. I got into pro league, and then. I kind of just gave them souvenirs. Like I printed five. Card connects, of myself, <laughs> and I gave it to my family for them to take home. The are they are they really happy for you? Yeah, they actually want me to continue doing it. Oh, that's awesome! That's all. That's really really awesome, actually. Yeah, they think it's cool. Yeah, doing something that you love, professionally. Yeah, it's interesting. Five card connects. Oh, that's gonna be, gonna be it's gonna be pretty. <laughs> Really cool. Really, really yeah. cool. Okay, uh, this one's asked by an anon. What was your reaction to World Hexathlon and Eclipse being revealed since you were there for both side reads? This is gonna be really funny. My reaction to World Hexathlon. I was pretty silent at first when I saw the uh, the artist that made the song. You think she had Aoi? Yeah. Yeah, Tonai and Anis Aoi. Yeah, Tonari no something. At first, yeah. I was like, Niwa wa in my mind, I was like, ooh. But then they revealed the effector, and I got hyped. And someone pointed that out in a video. And I think that was like the most funniest thing. I was like, oh, someone, someone caught me doing that. Someone, yeah, someone you're like caught in 4K. You're like, oh, uh, we're Nemesis Arena World Hexathlon, nothing. Uh, affected by like, Akizuki oh. Nagomu. Like, Akizuki Nagomu, like, oh, shit. I, I saw the effector. I was like, I got really hyped more than seeing the... Well, like, I think, I guess expressively. I looked like I got more hype seeing the effector more than the uh, artist. But... That's I'm not saying I wasn't hype seeing the arts. I was just more like, ooh. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> the reason why is because I actually know Akizuki personally. Yeah. yeah. He's... And I always mean with him. I was like, okay, bro, when are you making the 20? And he's like. And obviously, he's not going to tell me. He's, he's not like, going to tell you. He's like, he's like, okay. That's it? <laughs> just it's okay? Like the English, it's like the English. The okay. way I have to translate in English, I was like, when are you making the 20? He's like, okay. <laughs> Pretty much. I think it's the best way I can, like, I'd, interpret I'd, it. I'd, la I'd laugh. At that. I'd, I'd laugh if I, if I were in your position. I'd just, like, straight up just, like, belly laugh. <laughs> My reaction to World Hexathlon, like, seeing it or playing it? I, I guess I can also answer when playing it. Hmm. Like, I started seeing the patterns in the intro that were, like, never used before in the game. When I was hitting it, I felt like I was hitting it naturally. In the back of my mind, I was just thinking, like, I wonder if Daiki's hitting this. Uh, he was not. <laughs> no, he actually did for, like, half of it. Then, yeah, I think they're on the, the middle. Second half, he, probably, yeah. like, he probably was like, what, what am I playing? Yeah, like, what the heck What the heck is all this? It's like, it legit. Well, I saw all these, like, button patterns, and I was like, I've seen this somewhere before. Hmm. Maybe because of <laughs> so much s ran I was playing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. All the s ran has oh, made this chart like, familiar to you. And then, like, there was a lot of cross hands that I was not expecting. There was, like, way too even outside of like the gimmick and then like the tricky section I just made all of it on site I don't know it's like natural to me and then like the peak section like in the song it's a piano trail but I did not expect it to drag out for that long <laughs> so I was a bit worried at first when I was playing it but, but I it think... was like a long piano trail but you did a pretty, but it was like f pretty r insane performance. It, you S'd it on a side read, so yeah. And, and then I think, yeah, there was a BPL, like, no uh, no editing video, and then you're just like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> there was a video of you just, like, popping off. Oh, yeah, I was like, I won. And then I beat him by, like, 300 points, and I was like, oh, I won. Yeah, the, thank you. The side read. <laughs> And then I was like, I wonder what my money score is. And then I 993'd it, and I was like, oh. Oh, let's go. <laughs> I didn't think I asked him. <laughs> yeah, you turned to the money score, and you were like, oh, let's go. It's 
crazy. Is it Eclipse? Yeah, Eclipse. <laughs> I saw the jacket and then I saw the, the artist and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you and Yuichi were like tweeting at Cabellia after the match. You were like, hey. <laughs> I have something to talk about. Yeah, just, I, I got something <laughs> for you. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much saw the jacket and I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 oh no. I, I, it would be very, very rough. Yeah. But sight read wise, I was under pretty terrible conditions like the whole day, so I was surprised that I did fairly well on sight read. Yeah, the, the sight read um, was pretty pretty good, for all things considered. I don't think there was a video out on the YouTube channel. Of yeah, the the, yeah. Unfortunately, the dream match is like only. Yeah, on so I can't tell you what score I sight read. Unfortunately. Hmm. Only like, you went pretty far though, ex wise from Yuichi. That's what I remember because I watched I watched it. <laughs> yeah, I mean like, the X score was kind of like tight mm. for both of us at certain points. Then like I think in the last trail it was just like oh, it's gone to Levy. <laughs> no, it didn't even change the points. I think was it. Oh man, I forgot them. Well, well, I can't talk too much about it because it's yeah. like still paid wall. It's still a paid wall, and I don't know if it's still like available right now. But yeah, but that's your that's your advertisement. Get the dream match before you get, <laughs> watch the dream match if you yeah. haven't seen it. But yeah, I guess that's like the hexathlon and, and eclipse, and yeah, eclipse was a lot more rougher, I'd imagine. Okay, so second this yeah, one. Okay, so this one. Uh, okay, so this one is on match days. How did they stay warm? How did you stay warm? Did they allow you to play Voltex off camera? This was asked by Young Gooby, and yeah, I believe everyone got pretty ample like warm up times before the matches. How do we stay warm? Dog? Well, I don't know if you saw from other teams, but everyone just had like their own gloves. Like oh right like, right yeah, with heater. Heat warming gloves. Yeah, like heat, like a heat heater, heating gloves. I ended up getting a pair for myself for state finals. I didn't have those during um regular stage. During but the also, we had like little finger training thing. Oh, interesting. I don't know what to call it. Yeah, it's, yeah, but I yeah I think I get what, but I know what you're I know which device you're talking about, you know. Um, like those finger exercises. Off camera, sorry to interrupt you. No worries, yeah. No, no worries. Allow you to play a Voltex off camera. Well, I don't think you get to see it, but before we start the match, we have like, at first we had 30 minutes, and then I think the teams complained. <laughs> <laughs> so they extended it to 45 minutes on like the second batch recordings for warm up. Mm. And that warm up is like. You have to strategize your warm up too because you're splitting it between three players. Oh, so oh, you have it's to 40... try out the cab too. Oh, it's 45 minutes across three players on two machines. Yeah, you have 45 minutes of warm up before the match starts. But before your match, when they record it, you can like do whatever you want. Mm, like interesting. At one point, before my round one match in the regular stage, I actually did go to the round one that was close to the recording studio. Oh shit, you... I played for like an hour. Oh wow. <laughs> because that because the day was pretty delayed, I remember, because of the machine trouble, I believe. Right. The day was pretty delayed, so I was literally just warmed up the entire time. Locked and ready to go. Because, like, mm, I guess not related to this question, but my opinion, once you warm up for the day and you come back a few hours later, you're still warmed up. Hmm. Interesting. Like, your warm up resets when you sleep to the next day. Ah, okay. Like that's... My opinion. Mm. Some people around me say that they cool down 
when they have to queue sometimes. I'm just like, mm, I don't really personally feel that. Like once I'm locked in, I'm just like locked in, I guess. <laughs> kind of thing, I guess. I mean, I also have times where I cool down, but it's like really quick to warm up. Mm -hmm. At least for me, because like, I can have a three hour session, which is my normal nowadays. And I'm still like out and about in the city. Like three hours of playing and then I get hungry and then I go get food. So this is the part where the cooling, cooling down happens. Like my whole body, mainly the hands, your body can also feel like worn down. Like you feel a bit heavier. Mm. I don't know how to describe it. It feels like your hands harden because you've been like going at it for like two hours. <laughs> That's an interesting way to but put it. I can too. still push as long as I have food. So I can just do another three hour session, except it won't feel like the first session. It'll just feel less heavier. Less, yeah, just a bit harder, I guess. Mm, if you can deal with it, I feel like it's about the same. Hmm, I see. Okay, so. I don't know how to describe it. It's like you can suffer, like it hardens. Hmm. It's a, yeah, it's a bit hard to explain because I think this is, I think this is such a person to person kind of concept. There's I like, uh, right. whenever for me personally, I kind of don't cool down as fast as some people claim they do. Like once I have like an an hour in with the game, I'm just like, oh, I can still do about as well as I usually do. Something like that. Like it peters out like different ways. People like get warmed up different ways. Something like that. Right. Hmm. Okay, I guess we, I guess that concludes like uh, this warm up related question. Uh, okay, so this next one is yeah. During the final match, I before you played against uh, Sutora, actually no, he played against Daiki. I noticed that you really chose to play Heaven's Rain Maximum. However, a strategy card was used, and you had to play Black or White Gravity instead. Do you know the reason why the strategy card was used? I think even I can answer this, and it's because the trans had to use that strategy card. They didn't use it in the previous tag match, I believe. So they had to they had to use that strategy card somewhere between the match and yeah, it had to. It, so no, sorry, Silk Cat had to use that strategy card on that final match, or else like you know, it's a requirement, and they probably just decided, oh, Levy's probably gonna pick a twenty, so they don't want that to happen. So that's why they picked. It. Uh, is that correct? I guess. I guess there's ways, there's other ways you can speculate it. Hmm. Well, I don't know if my explanation is gonna say the same thing. Hmm. What's What's your like theory said. about it? Yeah. What's your theory about that? I'm still gonna call out the person who submitted this, for thinking I was playing Straw. <laughs> yeah, he but, did not um, play against Sutora. He played against Daiki. It's hard to know what was going on in their mind. Because even Daiki didn't even know. All he had oh. to do was win one match during the finals. And then he just secured the win for the entire team. Yeah. And he had a pick. Like, Daiki weird. didn't know. Like, when he won on Tenbara, yeah, his whole Tenbara. team was cheering. And Daiki had no idea what just happened. He was like, huh? Huh? <laughs> I mean, I also didn't know what was happening. I was just thinking, I just gotta win. There was not much going on in my mind. But strategy card... So did you like um have a say in this or was it just like the team kind of does it <laughs> for strategy cards I guess when we use strategy cards yeah when you use strategy cards did you have a say in it oh uh, well yes most of the time I was that person in the team that was just like if someone else needs a strategy card more than I do then use it mm. and I'll just deal with it. That was yeah. my approach for most scenarios. I understand. So basically, except yeah. this is about the SoCat match, but the Game Panic match. They wanted me to use the strategy card when I was during the final match with Kaneko. Uh huh. Because it went deep into more than just thinking about like you just change your opponent's pick. Because if two strategy card gets thrown, then that means that my own pick doesn't get altered. 
Hmm. They cancel so each other out, right? Me, yeah. Yeah, they're just asking me how confident am I in my own pick, and I was just like, I am very confident. Yeah, it was um, what was it called? Undead Ravings here, right? Yes. Yep, this was it. Mm. And yeah, we already predicted what Kaneko was gonna pick. Yeah, um, was... Lord Cross Knight. Yeah, it was like Lord, then it became uh, Everlasting. Yeah. Kind of the same. Not no, Cross Knight's easier in my opinion. <laughs> No. Okay. Oh, sorry. This is the X. This, this is the X for a battle. This is the X. So yeah, <laughs> those bursts are like hell. <laughs> no. Sorry that about one that. One burst will ruin yeah. your match. That would just like ruin um, my day. Do I know why a strategy card was used? I mean, like I could have asked Daiki because we did meet up with each other because we were practicing for the dream match. I didn't really directly ask him about the strategy card. It was just more like, I knew the strategy card was coming, because who wants to play a twenty against me? Literally <laughs> yeah, no one. Literally no one wants to play a twenty against. So like, me. I thought it was pretty obvious that they're just gonna throw a strategy card on me. Yeah. But it's still r really risky because that strategy card could turn into any nineteen or twenty that's in the list, and that list is huge. That's right. Yeah, there's so many nineteens though. Like it's it's a huge gamble. Hmm. And it but paid off, it anyway. I guess. And then we, we, yeah, we landed on black. Eight. That's like Literally. about, yeah. It was about the density level of Daiki, I would say, because I know Daiki's not as hard about density, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I but would yeah. not doubt mm -hmm. Daiki. That's what I would say. <laughs> Yeah, I I only I only have like the BPL matches and the streams to go with, but yeah, that is a he's a very very fearsome player. <laughs> okay, so that like settles this question here. Hope and uh oh wait, what is this? Sorry. Okay, okay, so this is asked by Golgarian. Out of every non-Korean, who would you be most scared to fight in the Sound Voltex one v one? Non-Korean. Hmm. I guess like. I guess like Who would I be the most scared to fight? Um, well, I've already fought Yuichi. I would have said I was scared to fight Yuichi, but we fought in their dream match. Is there... I haven't fought in Bowl, so I'd be yeah. scared to fight Bowl. Oh yeah, Bowl, man. Bowl, just by like, uh, achievements alone, I would be very, very terrified to fight. I think, I think, uh, I think his BP, I think his general BPL form, it's not really reflective of his actual skill, he kind of, and yeah. Once he's locked in, he's like an SPUC machine. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else? I mean, mm -hmm. Bolt comes to mind at first. Mm -hmm. Shiron's also scary. He's yeah, the second Shiron. pick for Giga. Yeah, Shiron, man. He's like the scariest 21.9 VF I've ever seen. <laughs> oh yeah, like he's... It's like... Don't, don't underestimate him. What yeah, 21.9, but he has like world rec... He has like the EX world record of like 19. So I remember when he got the 9 world record, the IX 9. I was like, what? <laughs> Is it my verse for her? No, uh, IX, uh, uh, the the metal the metal song. He, I remember when he PUC'd it. It was the world record. It was the EX world record. That was around like end of season two. I'm just like, huh? <laughs> oh, this is, yeah. I don't. I don't think I saw it. Yeah, that's. I was like, this is this is the second draft, and he's like twenty one point. So he below twin by then, like around then, he wasn't even twenty one point nine. So I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Let me take a look at the player list again. Yeah. Let's see if I'm missing someone. Mm, you did fight Kengo, and you did fight Kaneko. I think you had the history. Yeah, I fought Stana. You also fought... And like, outside of BPL, you fought people like K-Flat too, I believe, right? Right. I am also scared of Misobi. <laughs> Yeah, technically you guys 
Other than other than KC, you guys haven't fought in the EX score battle, I believe, right? KC, he knocked you out, I think. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the list will be like Ball, Shiron, and Misobi. Pretty much. Pretty much. Mm, I guess like that's the top three. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, uh, pretty, very, very understandable choices. Those three are like insane, You've, especially Shiron, man, and Bull. <laughs> okay, so um, next question here. Okay, before drafting on the BPL, before drafting on BPL starter, did you predict yourself like which team that was gonna draft you? Yes, I did predict what team I was gonna drafted by. Uh, yeah, you were pretty. Like, you know. I was already familiar with the title station people. Mm -hmm. You would say that they straight like tried to touch touch points with you when you arrived, or like around the BPL season starting, I guess. Mm. If I remember. It was a bunch of things that could not be said, basically. I understand. Uh, if you can't really say anything about it, then yeah. They didn't, like... It's not like they can just say, Oh, you're 100% guaranteed. Like, like, you're kind of not allowed to say that. Yeah, yeah, I, do. I think you're not... I think you can't say that, so... Yeah. Well, they didn't say that to me. But... Yeah, you... I think they wouldn't have said anything at all, so yeah. As they should be doing. Of course, yeah. Right. Of course, of course. But yeah, I did predict that it's going to be in title station. Did you have, like, I guess, like, to add on to this question, did you, like, see yourself in different teams also? Or, like, or, like, just trends? Well, the opening spots for first pick mm -hmm. were trends on Supernova. So I was a bit scared because Supernova picks first and then Trad picks, picks next during that time mm -hmm. so i was a scared not first mm, i see and yeah they generally within the season i noticed that um teams will still keep their aces unless they really really want to change up their strategy it's yeah. not very it's not very common to see people like change their aces out i guess except tohoku which they historically have gone quite like quick about this i guess but yeah, I guess mm. like. But yeah, I guess this is just more about like BPL, like general draft kind of things. But I guess the answer is just that yeah, you did kind of expect trends to straight go go for you. Okay, so probably like that's so probably that's like that's all for this one. Oh, okay. This one's very very long. <laughs> Um, okay, so how's it like living in Japan? I've seen you a couple of times, so you're on Kiko Honten, and was wondering how life in Japan is for you. As someone who has been living in Japan for the same time as you, I would like to hear your thoughts about what, the whole premise of daily and social life in a country where communication is considered one of the most challenging aspects about living in Japan. It's very long, but it's just basically like uh, how how is how is your uh, your life in Japan like, and do do you have any troubles communicating in the outset? Life in Japan is pretty good. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> straight, like I don't have it. trouble it. communicating hmm. in Japanese, but there's like things, so there's times where you just don't register. Is it because I'm like not the, native? Yeah. Level. Like, do they so, like misinter misinterpret like what you say sometimes because it's not spoken in the exact way that they would probably like hear it? I guess like probably no. come. Mm -hmm. mm, not like just that. sometimes they'll just say something and then um, just never heard it before in person. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see. Seems like a common problem also in your in a new country with a different language. When you hear a different when it, when you hear like a completely new word, your your mind just like, huh? What did he say? <laughs> I mean, at that point, it's just, it's not even the problem of not understanding what they said. It's just, do you have confidence? Mm. That's the key. Mm. If you can communicate in Japanese, not understanding mm. something is not really an obstacle. Because you can still ask. It's just, 
if you have the confidence to do so because like I, I see a bunch of people because mm -hmm. I used to do so as well they just like freeze up because they don't know what to react or respond when something happens that's out of their comfort zone hmm. so it's just more like uh, having the confidence to you know ask again like uh, can you say that again or what do you mean by that I guess something yeah just, yeah, just experience as well like how many times it's happened to you Hmm. This also plays a point where it's not even like language, it's just do you have confidence? Pretty much right, yeah. <laughs> Can you shift the conversation? Hmm. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it, you know, communicating is just difficult uh, in a different language, in your own language. Uh, I think it's just pretty difficult all around for some people. Yeah, I mean, like, at my point in daily life, I literally just mimic other people. I think that's Everybody actually yeah. other people say. Yeah, I think that's actually like the best way to start out. I when I learned English back then, because English is not my first language back then, that's what I would do. I just like watch people and just like I just watch shows and then watch how people talk and like like yo, I copy, I just copy that. Something like that. I mean, you do that while also like looking up what it means, cause mm -hmm, for sure. You don't want me saying the wrong things. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so I guess that settles this part of the question. Okay, so this one's kind of simple. Or well, something more simple. Sukiya versus Matsuya versus Yoshinoya. I never had Yoshinoya. Uh, I personally don't like Yoshinoya as much. <laughs> uh, is good, but I'm picking Matsuya because the oh. ship's free. My man, <laughs> I I really, really love Matsuya too. Um, I you think the favors um it's a super ski yeah. Yeah, that's kind of rough. <laughs> Matsuya, Matsuya is like the cheapest. Yeah, Matsuya is the cheapest, and I think I when I was like in Japan last time, I kind of just ate she the shiotari pork constantly. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess and yeah. Matsuya also has brands, other brand. Wait. Yeah, they Matsu. Matsu has other stores. Yeah, they have uh, the like, Katsu, the Katsudon store, Matsunoya, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they also have a curry store. Mm. They have a lot of like limited time menus too, from what I remember. I mean, like, Skiyo also has some. Um, but they're more gyudon focused, right? Other store. Yeah. But Tsukiya noticed has a uh, more gyudon focused than like Matsuya, has, like menu items like the curries and all that. I'm just like, hmm, interesting. I think like Skia by itself, not like Masu and the other stores. I think Skia has more variety. Mm -hmm. I, I like the quality of Skia, but yeah, I would pick Matsuya. It's cheaper. Mm. And Yoshinoya is in somewhere in the ether because he has never had Yoshinoya. <laughs> I also, I like that the Matsuya store is more like when you go out on the country slash suburban side especially when i was in osaka because you're not going to see in tokyo you really have to leave the city mm -hmm. like when i was in osaka i like the matsuya stores better than the skia ones that were 24 7 that were like out on the road oh interesting i like the layouts more hmm. i think i also just like the hmm. vibes around matsuya a lot so yeah okay so with the winner of this debate is just matsuya <laughs> Go to Matsuya, folks. Okay. Okay, so this one's asked by Ravel. Uh, what was Ravel? Um, what was the most uh, like surreal experience that you've had being part of trans? Just generally, I guess. Not really have to be match specific. Just with trans, I guess. Uh, nothing comes to mind, actually. Interesting. Is it because like, everything's pretty like. Is it because everything's like pretty like by the book or I mean, just, everything like... is surreal. It's just <laughs> the most surreal experience. Any story that be any part of trads. Yeah. Any like specific story that you wanna have in mind you wanna tell? Like trad specific? I mean like just anything I guess, you know. We're like the only team that does connect. 
you know. Oh yeah, the we... oh yeah, the one where you had to the one where it's a collaboration event with the Korean like arcades, plus and you know. Yeah, we just do basically Korean players versus Japanese players. And I think the next one's gonna be wow. Sound Voltex related, right? So I think you're gonna be a part of that. Yeah, it's gonna be Sound Voltex related because mm. the trailer has Jakarts and Jakarts and Mini Mini on it. And it's gonna be yeah, and it's gonna be held by the new sponsor, right? Uh, Game Plaza. So probably gonna be going there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this answers the question on the most rare experience. But maybe I'll remember something as we go on. Yeah, no worries about it. Um, can add on like any time, I guess. Okay, so we can we'll move on from this question first. We'll move on to the next one. Okay, so this is by Zorkono Tatsujin. Is there any other ge- rhythm games that you play a lot? It's kind of funny, because a lot of people don't know that I also play TDX. Hmm. But I also kind of keep them the down low, because yeah. I think it will be funny. <laughs> Just like, oh. That's literally it. Just funny. If like, oh yeah, by the way, I have like, hard clear on the most difficult songs from the game. Yeah, yeah. You, I remember you. I remember you told like the group, like, "Oh, I hate she, I hard, I just hard cleared uh, Icarus Bla- Icarus uh, Legendaria because <laughs> like Misobi was struggling on it." <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I shouldn't laugh. Uh, I feel bad. <laughs> That's like his last hard clear. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I played yeah. 3DX. Recently, I played Drum Mania. Oh, Drummania very, very fun. good. Very, very good choice. Uh, I think people. I think that game is really, really good for like fine tuning timing, and the songs are pretty, pretty great. Yeah, Song Selection is also good. Song Selection is really, really good. I've been really, really enjoying like the new stuff that's been coming out too. Um, just mostly those two games. Would you say that's what you would say? That I play a lot. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, that's it, the games that I play currently. Because I used to play Ongeki and Tune of them, and then I just dropped those games. I see. More just wanted to focus on. More just wanted to put your focus. Because in I, I reached like a ceiling in those games that I had to invest a lot of time. Mm-hmm. If I was gonna like, go for ranker status. Mm, that's right. Yeah, it's a lot. I just immediately dropped those games because I was thinking, some of is the game that I should be focusing on. Yeah, it's kind of kind of crazy, kind of crazy to think that like you know, a lot of people. Uh, I love the BPL players. I do notice that they mainly like focus on Voltex. Then you just see Sutora going to KOP and going to Project Sekai Worlds, and I'm just like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't you have a BP? Don't you still have BPL? <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. It's too crazy. He's, built He's just like built different. <laughs> okay, I guess that settles this one. Yeah, the answer is two DX, and as of recently, Dramania. Okay, so this one's by Marsh. This one's kind of like me, 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 me. It's kind. Of, I know this. I personally know this guy, and he's kind of a silly Billy. So. How many times have you been Nihongo Joe's gotten Nihongo Joe's in Japan and have you ever have you ever eaten that thing I paid ramen before? Never eaten there before. Mm. The amount of time I got Nihongo Joe's is not that much actually. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's like, like the like one pervasive meme. Being... Like kind of fluent level. Not really. I guess I kinda just block it out i don't know i feel like <laughs> it happens a lot but it just doesn't register really anymore 100 yeah, percent fluent but i can hold a conversation and at that point they just don't ask they yeah, just continue yeah. the conversation they don't really try to say anything, make a remark about it i guess yeah no mm. Yeah, don't mind the Tenkai big question, by the way. He's He he just really likes the Peerless Under Heaven a lot. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's probably it. He doesn't get Nihongo <laughs> Josie. Yeah, it's it's just it's just his thing. 
he's a friend of the channel and yeah <laughs> he also asked me to tell you that he's in, he's imperial but you know i'm not gonna i mean but like whatever screw that guy <laughs> okay all right so next so next no. question here yeah outside of rhythm games what is your favorite game this one's asked by squeaky bird my favorite game oh boy <laughs> what is it there's like two favorite games actually i don't think about it mm -hmm. the one that i play often recently is genshin impact oh of course <laughs> yeah i mean the soundtrack hooked me onto it it's pretty mm -hmm. much it soundtrack i mean the gameplay is kind of mid but <laughs> i'm taking the soundtrack I guess you like uh, the universe. The game that I used yeah. to play. Yeah. Huh? Sorry. I guess you like. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, did you? I guess you like the universe a lot. I don't know. I'm too invested into the game. <laughs> if it wasn't for such a strong, um, soundtrack, I just would not be continuing. I think. Interesting. What's your second? What's the second game that you're about to mention? Sorry about that. The second game that. I've been getting back into Final Fantasy fourteen. Oh, of course too. <laughs> getting back into it because they're about to drop another major expansion. Yeah, there was a. I heard about that one too. Yeah, it was for major. I guess it's kind of like nostalgic at this point because like, I didn't really play the game like how other people played it. I literally just skipped every cutscene and everything. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah. A lot of people are super invested in the game. I personally never played it myself, but like, oh, you just like pretty much speed ran through all the cutscenes. Yeah, literally speed ran. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's just a game to play with your friends. Mm. Mm. You're just hanging out with your friends. Yeah, it's kind of like a basically such a big simulator. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of things to do in the game as well. Mm. Okay, so I guess the answer to this question will be Genshin Impact and, as of late, Final Fantasy XIV. Okay, so the next for one. Now. Yeah, for now. Okay, so an Anon song? Okay, so what's your favorite song in Sound Voltex and your favorite song in any other rhythm game? Oh, I don't remember what I put down. I think well, he... I, don't, I also don't want to butcher the pronunciation, so I'm going to look at yeah, Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, I can My help favorite you. song in Sound Voltex. Uh -huh. It's actually a maximum 16. Like, oh, I don't really play levels 16 or lower, but I mm -hmm. do for this song. Oh, nice. Oh, what is it? Collier oh. Autumnus de Chocolat. Oh, La Collier de Autumnus de Chocolat. Yeah, by Citrus. Ocean, uh, ocean, ocean, ocean Citrus Color. I think that's Tachinon, I believe, yeah. It is Tachinon. Yeah, pretty crazy. The Collier de uh i also forgot it yeah <laughs> but yeah wow that's a really really good pick i really really enjoy i really enjoy that uh song also Gulia autumnus de chocolat okay i think i got it wrong maybe my french maybe a french viewer can roast us later <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny because i randomly picked it in an arena mm -hmm. with daiki mm -hmm. when we were in osaka and we were just playing ultimate arena with our caps next to each other and I max minus one day. One try? Yeah, one try. Crazy. <laughs> That's not an bad. easy song. That's not an easy song, I remember. No, it's, it's, X score wise, it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, yeah, I just break it. Um, sorry. Mm -hmm. I world record tied. Who was the. Straw. Who was it? Oh, Stora, of course. <laughs> I think it was Straw. Should be him. I wouldn't be surprised if it was him. Okay, um, so for Savotex, it's Kudio Autumnus de Chocolat. And what's, how about your, in another rhythm game? Anything else? Uh, I wrote something down for this. I forgot. Yeah, I, uh, I think I saw it too. I need to pull it back though. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. I think it was a 2DX song. It was, let me, let me actually pull it up. Yeah, we pre-fired these questions. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I pre-fired this. Oh, I found it. Okay. So, um, I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's a 2DX. I think it's Cast Hour. It's Aria. Oh, it's Aria. Oh, Ar oh, Aria by yeah. Satella and Aitsuki Nakuru. Aitsuki Nakuru. 
Oh yeah. Uh, I like that one. That's good. I think that was recent also. I mean. Yeah, not not too long. I like those type of songs. Mm. Yeah, and Satella has been like doing those a lot as of late. Yeah. So okay, I guess like for now, I guess it's like off the top of his head, uh, the favorite song in Sound Voltex is Couleur des Autonomes Chocolat, Autonomes de Chocolat, and for uh, another rhythm game, it's Aria from 2DX. Okay, okay, yep, sorry, let's just check it. All right, so, oh, okay, so this is the last question that we have right now for this, for this Q&A. So yeah, do you have any plans to submit music to Sound Voltex? We've seen people like Citrus and Kaname, despite you know having their history as BPL players, they've submitted songs to the songs for Sound Voltex. Do you have any plans yourself? <laughs> very very succinct, very very uh, <laughs> to the point. We will see. <laughs> we will see. We will see. And yeah, that's the end of the slideshow. I didn't make an ending slide. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much uh, again, Levian, for um, your time. We have spent one hour in this call. Uh, you just answered questions. Um, I appreciate I appreciate you like uh, coming down to record this at like until two a.m. in the morning, and you know, <laughs> and yeah. Um, Thank you. Uh, really, really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And I hope, and I hope to see you again next season. Next season, and yeah. Thank you so much to all the viewers. Like, do you have any like closing messages? Do you want to? It's like in hot ones where the host lets um the guests like promote anything they want in with it like one minute or something like that. Yeah. I won't give you a minute. I'll give you more than a minute, but you know, just go. Yeah, I just want to say thanks for the interview. It was fun. Hmm. That's no for problem, something man. to promote. Mm. Don't really have anything to promote. But based on like the last question, I have plans to make music. If you don't know, I also make music. Um, yeah, he does make music. There's an event that happens twice a year called M3. Mm -hmm. They hold it at UC Sento in Japan. Um, I'm gonna be trying to make a EP or something. Not like a full album. Mm -hmm. Last time I made like a 20 song compilation album. And this mm -hmm. time I'm probably gonna do like five song EP or something. Yeah. Like original. Mm -hmm. Or like solo. I'll try. No guarantee if I'll finish it, but... Uh, yeah, you ever in Japan during those times? I think it's mm. October 31st mm -hmm. for this year. I also do have plans on digital music distribution for my older release. It's just taking some time right now. I also have to deal with things in personal life as well. Mm, so. Yeah, that comes first, of course. Yeah, I also stream YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> go it's yeah. Twitch, I, yeah. I'll I'll I'll. I'll 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 link I'll link I'll link to his channel, of course, in the description and the social media too, and. Yeah, I hope I hope well. We'll hope I hope to see you in BPL season four too, because that's definitely gonna happen. Maybe it's a new ver version of the game too. I <laughs> yeah, if they have it, um, looking forward to it. Okay, so I guess yeah. Now we've reached about past one hour. Um, yeah, I guess we could probably just wave out to the crowd right here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the interview again, Levian. Thank you so much to everyone for all the questions. I hope you have taken something away from this interview. And I do have some announcements about my own future plans with this channel too. But they'll come. But they'll come when it comes. So yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we can wave to the camera, Levy. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, Good night. Take care. <laughs>